So welcome to our uh, webinar this morning, Math Faculty True Stories, Making the Shift to OER and Lumen Ohm. We have a great set of faculty presenters um, sharing their experiences with uh, moving to open educational resources and their experience with Lumen in our own uh, courseware. And so to get us started, um, I will turn things over to Joni Felt. Hi. First of all, thank you for joining us on a Friday to talk about math. My name is Joni Felt, and I'm the VP of Partnerships here at Lumen Learning. Today, our webinar is going to feature two different institutions, Southeast Missouri State and Florida State College at Jacksonville. Uh, they both moved from traditional publisher math materials to OER and Lumen's own, and we're really excited to have them share their experience and insights. Um, as Julie mentioned, we do have a big group today. We'd love to have you post your questions in the chat, and Julie will be monitoring that and alerting our presenters. Uh, with those questions as we go along and then we've left 20 minutes at the end just to field questions and at that time you're welcome to continue using the chat or you can go ahead and raise your hand and we'd love to hear you um, ask your questions directly using your audio so uh, today we'll start with a brief introduction of ohm by lumens uh, stem product manager deborah her sorry deborah her um, then southeast missouri state stan daly and ann schnurberg We'll talk about their department-wide transition just this fall to OER. And Dan led, Dan led CMO's um, math department's transition as the math department interim chairperson. And Ann is one of the instructors that work to customize and develop those courses. And both Dan and Ann are currently teaching in OM. And then when they finish, we'll hear from our longtime OM users, Florida State College at Jacksonville. And Peter Shapiro is the director of the Creative Learning Services, and he oversees all of the course development for the learning services. And then Matthew Simmons is um, a veteran OM user, and he is one of the developers of the courses that are currently running in OM with Lumen. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to Deborah to kick us off and get us started with a little introduction of OM. Let's see. Hang on. Oh, I should have put it on that. I'll give this just a minute. All right. All right. So, um, what is OM? So, OM offers a complete OER solution for math that is um, flexible, reliable, simple to adapt, and is really a you know, shoulder to shoulder replacement to standard publisher materials such as uh, My Math Lab and Web Assign. Um, we also offer day one access via your LMS or direct login. Um, the LMS integration is quite nice, we're quite proud of it. Um, it has a small technical footprint and offers niceties such as automatic grade return um, and uh, single sign-on um, for your students to have a seamless experience. And this is all at the cost, a uh, fraction of the cost of traditional published materials at standard pricing of $25 per enrolled student. If you compare that to standard pricing that we see with some of the big traditional publishers, it's, it's a big cost savings for our students. Um, so uh, one of the core features that I think most faculty end up using is an online homework system to do grade assessments. And you'll notice that there's this massive um, bank of teacher-created questions. Um, all the different question types that you would hope to see supporting STEM and math or STEM and courses. And these are algorithmically generated. So um, each student has a different version of the same problems with different um, numbers for their particular version so that um, faculty can feel like students are getting the good practice that they need and um, you know, mitigating cheating, which is sometimes a problem at the university level. Um, we also get enriched OER content. So OER, um, so these are uh, educational resources that have really generous licensing, which allows faculty to, if they want to, just use it right off the shelf without any concern um, of whether it's legitimate for them to use it or not. It also gives them an opportunity to engage with that material and improve it um, as they see fit. So many of our courses through the OWN platform also include an instructional text that have um, an editable text option, which is quite great for those faculty that want to iterate and really make that content suited for the way they want to present those materials. Um, there's also many video lessons and tutorials. Again, these guys are openly licensed. Huge teacher-created question banks and um, you know, nice features such as um, ability to include hits, direct feedback, and videos right inside the question um, itself. Um, and then here is our um, question library. Uh, 
These numbers are constantly growing as users are contributing more and more. Um, we also have a wide variety of supported question types. So instead of just multiple choice, multi-select, we also have number type, calculated um, expression type, um, matrices, I mean, you name it, we have a, a wide variety of different question types, um, which uh, really support our STEM courseware, courses. Um, and finally, our seamless LMS integration is easy to set up, single sign-on, automatic grade return, and we're supporting, are supporting the four big LMSs, uh, Blackboard, Canvas, Control Brightspace, as well as Moodle, um, which is great for um, institutions that have, uh, you know, large number of adjunct and instructional faculty that might not need to learn multiple platforms. They could really just leverage their existing LMS um, and give the students a very uh, streamlined experience into accessing those course materials. Um, and lastly, we have these teacher requested bells and whistles. This is a platform that was created by a math educator. The product manager myself is a former math educator. And I think that um, you'll see that in the product with the features that we offer. So things like late pass, um, which is essentially a way that students can self give themselves extensions. The faculty member can control you know, how many late passes to give, how long does a late pass um, extend the assignment, and for which assignments late passes are valid. So that's a very top favorite feature um, that our users often use. Um, there's also just things that help at scale. So like um, from semester to semester, these kind of bulk operations that are very, very annoying to do one by one, um, a lot of these operations have been optimized so that um, your transition from semester to semester is easy. Um, and another common feature that a lot of users end up using is a time exception multiplier. So thinking about those students that may have um, extended test taking time or other um, accessibility requirements, the platform does a good job to um, you know, really try to support those students by giving keyboard navigation options um, and having faculty have features like the time exception multiplier, which would automatically put in the um, time exception um, requirement just across the board in the system. So pretty nice um, features that, again, are really driven by faculty needs and requests. Excellent, thank you, Deborah. Um, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Dan and Ann. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and let Ann take over. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so my name is Dan Daly. I am the um, interim chair of the Department of Mathematics at Southeast Missouri State University. Um, we have been um, working with a traditional publisher um, for many, uh, for five years, well, um, really off and on um, the last 10 years since I've been here. Um, and we started looking for new, uh, a new alternative um, last fall. And so here's who we are. So we are a comprehensive regional university um, in the southeast um, part of Missouri. We are about two hours south of St. Louis. Um, we have approximately 11,000 students. Um, and um, we teach um, a lot of lower division courses. We are um, very much a service department to the rest of the university. We teach classes pre-calculus, statistical reasoning, quantitative reasoning, basic math skills. Um, you know, we have for a lot of service courses, um, you know, right now we have about 2,200 um, students in um, those type of service math courses. Um, so we serve a lot of a lot of different students. Um, and if you wouldn't mind forwarding the slide, don't mind. If I figure out how to do it. There we go. Okay. So here was our situation. Um, oops. One back. One back. One back. Okay. There we go. Um, so our situation. Um, so we were using one of the big, uh, big publishers tools um, and we had actually a lot of problems. Um, so first off, um, the system that we were using was very expensive. 
Um, per student, it costs um, 120, 130 bucks to 180, um, depending on the course, depending on the, the text. Um, after the bookstore mark, after the bookstore markup. So there were a lot of student complaints about the cost of the system. Um, that was also led um, to um, how the students had access to the materials. Um, they had access to an ebook, but they had to actually get that ebook through the previous system. Um, they could not get a hard copy of that book um, or had to pay extra for a hard copy of the book. Um, on top of that 130 to 180. Um, and then the ebook, this access to the ebook was directly tied to the accessibility of the system. So if they couldn't log into the system, they could not log into, they could not get access to the book. Um, and if the system goes down, um, this is point three, if the system went down, they wouldn't have access to their homework. They also wouldn't have access to their book. Um, and that was a real issue for us because pretty much every fall from 2014 on, our system went down. Or the system, the system that we were working with went down. Sometimes it was, you know, a day. Sometimes it was a week or in fall 2016, it was a week and a half. And that was particularly bad for us. We had student complaint, students complaining, we had parents complaining. Um, they were complaining not just to the department, they were complaining to the dean, they were complaining to the president and the provost. Um, and eventually, you know, we were told, you, you know, we cannot continue to use the system, we've got to find a different alternative. Um, and so, um, you know, that's what we did. Uh, ultimately, also, um, another problem that we had, or just an issue, um, our previous system did not integrate with our LMS. Um, it could have, um, but it wasn't. It was, it was a choice that it was not integrating. Um, so in fall of 2017, um, we started looking for another alternative, and we decided on um, working with Lumen um, and working with Ohm. Um, and so over the past year, year and a half, you know, we've been trying to make the transition to, um, for all of our courses, um, our lower division service courses, to this new um, platform. Um, and so we rolled them out um, this fall, um, fall 2018. Um, so right now we are teaching pre-calculus, we are teaching mathematical reasoning. We are teaching statistical reasoning. We are teaching basic math skills. Um, we are teaching um, co-requisite labs. For those of you who are familiar with like co-requisite models, um, we have co-requisites for the statistical reasoning, for the quantitative reasoning courses. Um, those are also being taught through, um, through OWN. Um, and I will let uh, Anne talk a little bit about how this is going. She is currently, she was um, one of the ones instrumental in um, the design of the statistical reasoning course, um, and she's currently teaching that this semester. Hi, uh, I'm Ann Schnurbush, and, and as Dan said, I'm an instructor at, uh, at Southeast Missouri State. Um, uh, just a little bit about the switch. Um, I, we have redesigned courses um, several times, uh, several, we have several iterations of, of these courses out there. And so when I was on the last redesign team, we worked together and we, did, and we designed it with uh, publishers materials. And so I was on the same redesign team and I, re and I redesigned uh, with another uh, colleague, uh, the statistical reasoning course. Um, just, just what we have found is, is I think, and maybe, and I think I'm looking from the statistics side more than the algebra side, that the textbooks were um, fairly limited, um, but we've got more flexibility with what we do. And I, I plan to show you our course quickly here in a second. Um, we, we keep saying in the future, because this is very much a pilot semester, but in the future, we hope to do some more uh, uh, personal changes in some of the textbooks. 
Um, the problems, this was a new thing for us, the problems come from a general list of problems. And so I might search for um, discrete probability distribution rather than having a set of problems that go specifically with that sec section from the textbook. And, and so that, um, like most things, are good and bad, um, but um, it, it does give you some flexibility. It does take time to search for the problems. Uh, we started with a core course, though, and so that, that helped us considerably. And so um, there are a lot of courses out there that you could have access to, and you could say, let me modify that course. Um, we work through the summer. Um, you, could, you know how summers go. Um, and we got a course that we thought um, looked pretty good. We thought we had everything in there, but truthfully, we did not have the time to work through each problem before assigning to the students. And we found out that there were problems with that, that there were some problems that we had in there that really were solved a, a, a way we didn't want it to solve and got it. Like, well, for example, in statistics, it's just a little different. Um, they were using two standard deviations for outliers instead of, uh, instead of you know, Q1 minus 1.5 the IQR. Um, and so we didn't really know that until we looked at the code for the problem. So it's really, really important to work through the problems before assigning them to students. So we're trying to stay ahead of the game and making modifications as we go. Um, we develop courses uh, for all instructors to teach, we try to uh, teach where each student gets the same level of difficulty in every course that they take. Um, if your uh, institution would allow it, I think it would be much, much easier if uh, myself and the other person that designed the course with me, uh, if we would have piloted the, for a semester first. Um, something else, because we didn't pilot, is that once other instructors have imported our course, uh, then we have to communicate changes by email. Uh, we, we cannot trickle down those changes from a master course. And so um, it's, like, it's like anything else. It's, it, was a, it was a time issue, and, uh, it, and had, had I done it again, we would have done it slightly differently. But, but all in all, we're happy with it. Um, uh, and so, uh, what, do, what do we like about it? Um, well, there's flexibility. Who doesn't like flexibility? You've got a variety of resources uh, from a variety of sources. You can arrange the textbook materials as it is. Uh, we posted links to an abbreviated um, section for each, and we only posted the sections we're going to use. So the students have easy access to that. Um, I found it really easy to manage. Uh, it was, it's very much like anything else we've used. Um, and I, I kind of wanted to show you the seamless incorporation just from our courses. Um, I was against um, putting it directly into the LMS this first semester. I thought we were trying to do too much too quick. I thought we should just have a separate login. Um, this, this is the thing, though, though I'm going to eat my words, because this is the thing I really like about it, and I think the students really like about it, is that it's directly incorporated into the LMS. The students understand there's another program out there, but they really don't see that they have access with it, and I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, nice that the grades are automatically imported into the LMS. Um, like anything else, there's some things you need to learn. If a student doesn't, um, uh, uh, my understanding is, and we're still figuring some of this out, is that if a student uh, doesn't do an assignment, well, I know, if a student doesn't do an assignment, they're not automatically giving them a zero, given a zero. If I give them a zero into the, in the LMS though, and then they use a late pass, I'm gonna have to check some things manually, but I still have some things to learn about that. Today though, um, I did, um, someone asked me about a quiz and, and thought they deserved partial credit for something. I don't do that a lot with these little quizzes we have, but I did in OM today, changed the grade on a quiz and I checked the LMS and it was imported immediately. So that was really, really nice. Um, I think it's really intuitive from a student's uh, student view. Um, I have had no questions about how to use it. Um, and so that's really nice. And of course we love to save money. And I think that was what, as Dan said, that's what derived our, our change. 
I did think I was going to spend a minute and just, I have it pulled up, um, just show you uh, how it incorporate how, how it, it pulls together. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on this. Um, but let's see, I gotta get this out of the way. Okay, um, so here is um, my, my, we use Moodle. So here is my Moodle course, okay? If I look at my comparable Lumen course, I should have had that open. Uh, it'll just take a second though. Um, this is my Lumen course. If I open up my module two, you can see that we had learning objectives, textbook links, videos, we had assignments, um, and then below that we had quizzes. Okay, so we had all this. When we imported it, and we imported it, here's the comparable module two, it came in like this. And so notice that we still had our learning objectives, we still have our textbook links, we have to click on that to see it, we still had our videos, but then I've been adding notes templates here. And I call it a notes template because um, I, you know, we kind of fill them in in class. That's what I use for my lecture notes. I teach in a large classroom and uh, I write in an iPad while I walk around so the students have access to that. But the big thing is when the students do the homework is that they have the assignments right here and they just click on that assignment. And that homework just pops up. And so that's just really, really nice from a student, a student view. From a teacher view, um, we can also manage it through LTI Home. So I'm, I'm, I'm in Moodle. I'm not in Lumen, technically speaking. I, I know I'm technically speaking now. But if I click the LTI Home, I can go in and I can look at my settings for the course and I can change dates, etc. I can modify the questions from the course right here. So as a developer, I felt really comfortable uh, with the um, developer. I felt really comfortable with using OM, but when we're passing it on to other, other instructors that weren't developing it, they got comfortable really quickly because it was built in so seamlessly. So uh, I think that's the best thing about it is that it incorporates perfectly into the LMS. We're no longer telling students to go to three different websites or two different websites. Um, and then customer support, um, you know, um, the in-person help was available before the course began. Um, they sent Paul, I don't remember his last name, uh, and he worked with, a, he was here two or three days um, and very, very helpful and helped us set up things. We were a little confused on the settings um, and we got them all right before we trickled them down to everyone else. Um, if you, I sent an email about a problem, I got a response within 24 hours. Um, I have not contacted an author of a question directly, but I know people that have had and, and have gotten prompt responses. And so I think customer service is excellent. Um, advice that I would give, uh, and this is uh, things that, that maybe we didn't do as much, is you know really spend time exploring, uh, spend time with Lumen. Uh, we were with OM before you make that decision. We were, um, we were forced to make a decision. Um, and so I, I don't know, it's worked out well, we're happy with it, but I wish we would have spent a little bit more time exploring. Um, be, and be sure to work each problem before assigning to the students. Um, I, I, I think I can't emphasize that enough. I think we've all had a little bit of issues because of that. But like anything else, that's the time. Is this our last slide, Dan, or do we have one more? Oops, that was our last one. Do you have anything else to say, Dan? Um, yeah, I, I would say, you know, from the perspective of the chair of the department, um, I really have not gotten a lot of, you know, student complaints about, um, you know, the system at all. Um, I just got a, an email from a student who, you know, was, you know, a little bit, a bit concerned, um, but his concern was mainly more about the contents rather than the, the homework system. So, um, 
you know, the students really, from all I've seen, generally seem to be to be on board with it. It has not been a, a huge, um, you know, not a lot of complaints. Um, the cost has been much, much less, um, something they, you know, emphasize really, really like, you know, $25 um, straight up fee, much better than the, um, than the uh, 130, 180 that, that they were paying before. Um, and the system has also been very, very stable. It has not gone down, to my knowledge, this entire semester. It was ready to go on day one. It has been ready to go whenever anybody is needed. Nobody has complained about it being down. That is huge um, and something we did not have with our previous system. And, and we're a rental campus in terms of uh, paper textbooks. So they're used to paying, paying about $25 a textbook. You know, if you're a purchase campus, then the money doesn't seem the same. But with our students, this money really, really makes a difference, I think. I think we're finished. Is that right? That's about, yeah, that's all okay. I've done. I will stop sharing then. Thank you so much, Ann and Dan. Um, really appreciate your insight. I'm sure we'll have some questions for you. We'll turn it over um, to Peter and Matthew, who are longtime users of OM, and let you go ahead and take the screen share. Okay. Let me go ahead and share my screen, and we'll go from there. Um, All right, not sure, not seeing that yet. Here we go. Oh, I have to share. There we go. Well, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are, everybody. My name is Pete Shapiro. Uh, I'm the Director of Creative Learning Services. Along with me, Professor Matthew Simmons uh, from our math department. Uh, I, I have to say, um, I'm not a math professor. I'm not associated with the math department. <laughs> I don't play one on TV. Uh, <laughs> uh, but wanted to give you, a, a, I guess, an administrative perspective as far as what we've been doing at Florida State College of Jacksonville. Uh, for those of you who are not uh, familiar with our institution uh, here in Jacksonville, Florida, and we serve about 50,000 students, uh, we, uh, we started, a, a few of our professors had already been experimenting uh, and or regularly using MyOpenMath, or MOM as it's affectionately called, uh, before the switch over to, uh, to OM. Um, we were in the midst of an Achieving the Dream OER degree initiative grant. Uh, we are one of 19 grantees. And so uh, starting in uh, late 2016, uh, we were exploring how we were going to take our uh, AA degree. And yes, we are a state college. If you're not familiar with the Florida system, uh, we are one of the community colleges that also offers 14 bachelor's degrees. So we primarily uh, give out associate's degrees, um, but have several bachelor's programs. So we have a lot of the, the, the math courses that we were looking at are those who are uh, going into community college, intermediate algebra, uh, the Gateway College Algebra, uh, if you're not going in the path where you might take College Algebra and then Stats, we're looking at our, our two topics courses, the Topics in College Math and uh, Explorations in College Math. So those um, five courses were the focus from the math perspective of our online open education resource-based AA degree. Uh, so as we embarked on that and talked with the math department and started uh, uh, speaking with some of the professors that we know uh, very well over in online and workforce, and uh, uh, Matthew, who will uh, speak in a few moments um, uh, once I give you this overview, uh, I mean, did just some tremendous work with our stats course and, and has done some great work with, with Lumen in addition to working with our students. Um, you know, we had uh, some professors who basically said, you know, give me over the Christmas break. I need to take a look at this. I, I need to make sure this is something that I really want to do. Uh, so this one professor took about two months of his own personal time over break. Uh, and then as we got started in our winter semester in, uh, um, and, and said, I'm in, uh, let's do this. Um, so we have these five courses that are now in Luminome. 
uh, four faculty members were doing the five courses. Um, and we started offering uh, these uh, through Lumen Ohm in uh, the summer of 2017. So we started with just two courses and three sections. And uh, it's unusual that we'll offer at this point all five courses at the same time. But uh, like for fall, uh, this fall, we're offering four courses and 13 sections. Um, I can tell you pretty much the same experience that Southeast Missouri has, has, has told you. First off, it just works. Um, Luminome is, uh, is very simple from a student perspective. Uh, we have had very little, if any, feedback at all with regards to issues. Uh, the grant uh, up through this semester has actually paid for the $25 ahead. So starting in spring, uh, our students in those five courses for those sections that are in Lumen Ohm uh, will need to purchase from the bookstore for $25. And again, it's the same $25. There's no uh, there's no markup beyond that figure. Um, from an expense perspective, from access, from stability, uh, I, I, there were so many issues I understand this summer with one of the other platforms, uh, commercial platforms that are used by our math area. Uh, Luminome, nothing. Seamless. Uh, so, uh, and the few situations where I know that faculty have needed assistance with, with the grade book, uh, and thank you, Deborah Her, for everything that you do. Um, you know, they get answers extremely quickly. Uh, so it's been a really good experience from an administrative perspective, uh, and especially from a from not from the math department, from but a department who's asking uh, professors in, in math through their department chair and their uh, and their dean. Um, you know, it's. It's slow. Um, this is not a situation where the entire department moved over. Uh, I think this will slowly expand. Uh, I know online, uh, any adjuncts that are, are teaching uh, any of these courses online will be using Lumen Home. Um, as far as on ground and hybrid, uh, you know, some are adopting, uh, and we're hopeful that uh, uh, we can make some inroads over this next couple of semesters. For dual enrollment, um, we are looking to train a number of professors at the high schools to teach uh, using Luminome. So uh, we're, we're really impressed by it. Uh, we're thrilled about what Lumen has done with the product. And um, Matt, I think I should turn it over to you at this point in time. And then maybe when you're finished, uh, I, I may have a closing comment or two. All right, that sounds good, thank you. I would turn my video on, but unfortunately, my camera on my computer doesn't want to work, so that'll be fine. But if you could put the next slide up that we had. Ah, okay. So I'll go ahead and share again, I guess, huh? All right. Yeah, that's it. We didn't prepare anything too fancy for you today, but we're just here to talk about our testimony and our story a little bit. <clears throat> but that we had for switching to Luminum or at least trying it out initially was we were part of the Achieving the Dream grant as Pete kind of mentioned and we were looking after textbook affordability and then looking at cost of materials trying to drop that price down a little bit because well it's in other states too but Florida especially has really been looking at the cost of course materials and what we're doing with our students and how much we're charging per credit hour for course materials or how much students are having to pay. So that was kind of the drive behind all of that and why we switched over. So that's what we were trying to address by switching over to trying out Lumen Zone. So as far as switching from previous course materials, I'm in my third year as math faculty, so I'm not as accustomed to the commercial materials that the college has been using. So Switching over wasn't too big of a deal for me for the courses I was working with. But for people that have been teaching for maybe 15, 20 years, possibly even more than that, because people don't necessarily like change. And with things that have been happening at our institution with change, they uh, kind of want to just keep their course materials and what they've been using the same. But 
what's happened is we started off with, well, just a couple professors that tried Luminum and created courses. Then eventually this increased to five of us who created five different courses in Luminum. And then we are pretty much the advocates of the individual courses that are created. So for instance, I am teaching the statistics course. That's the course that I created in Luminum. And I will honestly say that out of all the courses that were created, we had intermediate algebra, college algebra, statistics, and then two liberal arts math classes. I would say the stats course was the most difficult to make because of the fact that people use different types of technology and statistics. Some of them will use the graphing calculator. Some of them will use Google Sheets. Some of them will use StatCrunch. There's just many different options. So based on what you use could actually play a role in how the computer reads your answers. But the cool thing is the flexibility that Lumen offers. I was able to go into questions and actually adjust the interval of answers and account for the error that could occur whenever a student either rounds in mid calculations in a question or error that could occur based on the technology that you use. So it is definitely flexible, workable. You can adjust it and pretty much make, make it your own, I guess you could say. So those of us that created these courses are actually now working with other faculty members and letting them try our courses out. And one thing that's really neat about OM is literally on the home menu of the course or your course area where the <coughs> courses are listed that you're teaching, you can click a button by a course and add any professor from your institution to it. If, you're, if they're having an issue with the statistics course, I tell them to add me, tell me what the issue is, and then I'll go in and try and fix it. But if I can't fix it, in the top right corner is a yellow help button. We just fill out a request. We put how urgent the matter is. And literally, I mean, even if it isn't like the most urgent matter in the world, we're here back within one business day or maybe two even. So it's really quick customer support. And so that's pretty amazing, honestly. You don't have to sit there and wait around for anything. So as far as switching, it's a work in progress. and. We have more people that are going to try it out in spring. I'm working with someone who's taught for, she taught in the public school system for 30 years and she retired and she's actually been adjuncting for 15 to 20 years. So she's been seeing plenty of change over her lifetime in teaching. She's actually going to try out Lumen Ob in the spring. And she's, I mean, she's obviously a little scared, but she's checked out the platform and everything. And we're talking someone that's been through so many different systems. And she's like, I think I can do this. This isn't that bad. And the students are the same way. Other platforms are actually a little bit intimidating. There's kind of too much to do in them and too many buttons you could potentially click. So with Lumen, the nice thing about that is whenever I did face-to-face -face classes this summer, I did online classes, we've done hybrid classes, any, any sort of modality is good for Lumen. So what happened in this situation is my students, I gave them a survey just to get their feedback on how they like Lumen because it was my first summer teaching in Lumen. The previous summer, I was in a different software. And all of them said, one, they completely love the fact that they saved about $100 in course materials, a little bit more, actually. So they're like, this could help me pay for gas. This could help me pay for some of my bills. If that really adds up, we have an entire AA program pathway that uses open education resources. So imagine the savings on someone taking 60 credit hours or a little bit, about 20 classes, and they don't have to buy, buy course materials. So, or they just buy them at a very low rate anyway. <clears throat> so they really like the simplicity of the platform and it worked fine. It never crashed on them. I never got emails from students saying, I tried to log in, but it wouldn't let me log in. I always have to make the disclaimer on the first day of class that uh, I am not I am not the IT help desk or, or customer support there for for commercial platforms or anything. There's only so much I can do as a professor to fix issues with different software. So I, I made that clear with them, but that wasn't an issue in Lumen. No one ever said they couldn't log in. No one ever said that the system was down. We didn't have any issues with proctored testing. So that's kind of scary when a platform goes down and. You know, Students can't take their proctored test. That's a major issue. So students love the simplicity. Site never crashes. And they're making improvements as we go along, too. So that's one great thing. You can send your suggestions. And Lumen's actually working on fulfilling those suggestions. They have an entire wish list of things that they're actually working on. So they're very open to changes. 
and making things better for us. And it was initially created by faculty for faculty. So you can imagine that they catered it a lot to the needs of students and teachers both. So customer support, it's been phenomenal, as I mentioned. And then as far as advice for others considering Luminum, I spent a very long time developing my statistics course because I'm very picky and I wanted to make sure that the quality of my product was going to be the absolute best. I wanted to make a product that was better than any sort of commercial item that I ever, 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 ever used for teaching any of my courses. So what happened was I got a little too ambitious. I probably should have just started using one of Lumen statistics templates and then gone in and made minor modifications. But I honestly pretty much did everything from scratch in my course, which takes entirely too long. So I definitely encourage getting one person at your institution to go in and make a master course shell using one of Lumen's templates, make some minor adjustments and anything else that you see fit. And then from there, you can just look at the course and make modifications as time goes by. Because what happened with us was we created a course, we piloted it, and then we actually went through and <clears throat> made adjustments based on that. So I recommend getting a template, making minor adjustments and changes as you see fit, then piloting the course, and then letting it go completely live for anybody and everybody to use. I would say the statistics mm -hmm. course is the tricky one of all due to rounding issues, but as far as the algebra courses that I was looking at that we created at our institution, a lot of them are really nice, so you don't really have to worry about there being that many errors in the questions with algebra. It's, there's very little room for rounding errors there. And I think that's, that's about pretty much it as far as our experience at our institution. I'm not sure if Pete has anything else he wants to add or not. I'll just quickly say on the back end, uh, I know there was talk earlier about integrate, you know, about integration, and uh, we did not start off uh, integrating into our learning management system, and, and part of that just had to do with the fact that this was going to be sort of this groundswell. We wanted to see, you know, as we start to get people involved, how it was going to work, and then we were also looking at potentially a new learning management system. And now that is official and that uh, we will be switching to uh, from Blackboard to Canvas uh, over the next uh, seven, eight months. I think fully by next fall, we will be uh, in Canvas and out of Blackboard. Uh, so there's, there's a lot on our plate there. Uh, I know if you were to ask our, our online uh, group with regards to Lumen Ohm, they would love to just integrate um you know faculty that are used to using a third party tool strictly in the third party tool probably not so interested in working within the lms because they just haven't had to do that very much um we've been uh thrilled about our relationship with lumen about uh, uh how they they really do listen to our faculty uh, our faculty have been wonderful, Matthew especially, in looking at these courses from, uh, from different perspectives and, and really working hard to make them best of breed. Uh, we're, we're really proud of them. I will stop sharing. Thank you so much. I uh, really appreciate your insights, Peter and Matthew. Um, very helpful. Um, Julie, do you want to, let me go ahead and share my screen um, and then I'll let, because um, we do have some, a little bit of additional information, one moment. Yeah, jo Joni, while you're doing that, this is Julie and I've been monitoring um, some of the uh, questions in the background. So first off, um, thank you to all of our panelists. That was a great presentation. We appreciate that. Um, to those who are uh, viewing the webinar, if you have questions, feel free to add them in either the Q&A tool, we'll keep an eye on those, um, as well as in chat. So you can do whichever of those is easiest. Um, we do have one question uh, so far that I will read and then we can answer. Um, this comes from Andrew Park. The biggest issue that pops up trying to convince instructors to switch to OER is a lack of an, adopt an option for adaptive learning. 
is there any plan in the pipeline to provide this functionality? It seems to me it doesn't have to be very sophisticated in terms of AI to be functional from the instructor and student side. Um, so uh, again, this is Julie, and I can uh, answer this, and then um, and then um, I'll, I'll give Deborah, our our math and uh, quantitative product manager, an opportunity to add anything. Um, at the t at the moment, we do not have a um, an adaptive option for. Uh, for Ohm in the same way that uh, so a lot of folks have used Alex, for example, that's probably um, one of the most common ones that we see in math. Um, and uh, at, at this stage, we do not have an option for that. We do have a, a personalized learning tool called Waymaker um, that we have uh, done some initial uh, work with in math. Um, it, it provides a, uh, we, we call it a personalized learning um, or a personalized study plan that, um, that it uses some assessment to help uh, understand which skills the student particularly needs um, to focus on and then provides kind of signposting and guidance to the student uh, to help them understand the areas where they're struggling and, and then which, what, what the next set of steps is for them to reinforce their um, their learning and achieve mastery of the different skills. Um, we have done some um, initial work with that tool, particularly in a kind of a developmental math setting. Um, we are also doing some piloting with it in a couple of other um, math courses. And um, there, there are some things that we're still working out about the nature of, of math learning that we want to iron, iron things out with, um, but hope to have more on that uh, later in the coming months. We don't have a date on that now. Um, if you're interested in that in particular, and we'd be happy to show you what we're doing and, and kind of keep you apprised of progress with the, uh, the institutions that are trying that out now. Um, and, and can certainly provide a lot more information about that, that personalized learning set of tools uh, that Waymaker provides. All right, Deborah, would you add anything to that? That I might have um, said, but um, Andrew, are, if you um, have any kind of specific feedback around the requirements that faculty are looking for, um, I would love it if we could connect and just have a quick 15 minute chat and, um, you know, as a product manager, it's just so incredibly helpful to get the requirements directly from our users instead of, you know, pontificating by myself a cup of tea. So I um, really appreciate having an opportunity to connect um, offline um, if you have time and if you feel so inclined. All right. Thank you. Um, we have another question, Robert Lamar. How does payment work? Is an access code provided through the bookstore or does Lumen bill the institution? Is there something else? Uh, Joni, do you want to take that question? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have a number of different options for payment. Uh, both of those are correct. You can purchase an activation code through the, um, through the bookstore. And um, depending on the bookstore, we do have a partnership with our Follett bookstore. So there is no markup on our activation codes through Follett. Uh, we can also do an institutional pay. If you are a Follett school, you can do it through Include Ed, or you can just put a course fee on the course and we can bill the institution directly. We do have a third option as well, which is our direct pay, where you can actually have your students pay directly to Lumen. So we do have those three different options. Uh, we do have a fourth option out there if there's a big system that's interested that we have um, a, um, a just a, a one-time payment for the year that you can do there as well. So happy to speak with you about any of those options. All right, thank you. And then there's a, another follow-up question from Robert. Uh, on lumenlearning.com, I see Ohm and also Candela and Waymaker. What's the difference between these different uh, products? Um, Joni, do you want to take that one? Do you want me to take that one? Happy to. Um, so with our own, that's what we've been talking about today. That's our quantitative system or our math system. We also have some of our economics questions in there, chemistry questions. So anything quantitative, we've, we've started moving over to Ohm. Um, the other two that you spoke, that you mentioned are our Candela and our Waymaker courses. Our Candela courses are a basic e-textbook replacement, so kind of the first generation OER that we have. And our Waymaker courses are courses that run through um, all of the disciplines. They are a personalized learning solution. Um, they have a personalized study plan and some really powerful teacher tools on those as well. Um, those are also $25, um, like the Waymaker or like the OWN courses are. 
And the question about the adaptive learning, um, some of our own courses we have and are continuing to work on getting them into the Waymaker platform so that you do have that option of having a quantitative learning with that personalized learning system with the Waymaker. All right, thank you, Joni. Um, our, if there are other questions, uh, please uh, go ahead. Oh, here's another one. Um, does Lumen Ohm offer other discipline courses that your institution has experienced? And so, um, Teresa, I, I think you're looking for uh, using Ohm for disciplines other than math. Uh, Joni, or De actually Deborah, you might be a good person to respond to that one. Yeah, so we have uh, some faculty that are using it in chemistry as well as um, I'm trying to think what else. I've seen a handful of physics style courses, but as we get into um, uh, get, get outside of um, math and chem physics, there are other courses that are in the system that might be um, more do it yourself, build it out because there's just a smaller community of people actually building that content actively. Um, but I think predominantly math with some chemistry and some physics available in the system uh, currently today. And with that, I'll, I'll add just a little bit there. So, um, so Ohm, the, the underlying system behind Ohm, it, it, it really is designed as a course building platform with a lot of robustness around the, the supporting quantitative uh, questions. And so um, it, it does have the ability if somebody wants to, you know, do the programming of the questions and, and putting, you know, at, adding a, a different discipline. Um, it, it is actually built for people to be able to do that, but, but it, it uh, uses LaTeX, the programming language, to, to do net new questions. Um, most of the people who use Ohm today come in using Ohm and they use one of the pre existing template courses. Um, so there, there's a variety of different courses and for many subjects, several different options that you can choose from and see which one would you like to use as a starting point and, and, and kind of mix and match or you know, figure out what, what is the, the structure of the course that you want to fit. And so it has really nice flexibility from that perspective. Um, and then where we already have folks teaching those disciplines, um, typically a, a, a good starting point so that, so that you don't have to, to start from scratch. Um, but if you're looking for a good system that has a lot of flexibility and, and does support um, a variety of different quantitative question types and, and that type of, you know, the homework and the practice and so forth, um, O can be a really great option. It's a, it's a very uh, flexible platform that way. Hmm. Great response. All right. Other questions? All right, we'll give it another couple minutes um, or another moment, I guess, uh, while we're waiting on that to see if any other questions come up. Um, thank you for, for being part of the, the webinar. And Joni, is there anything else that you would like to uh, put to the panelists before we close things off? No, we just really appreciate our panelists joining us. It's really great to, we hear from them, but to have them give an overview of their entire experiences is really wonderful for others to hear and for us to hear as well as we're taking notes on some suggestions that they've made. Um, so we really appreciate your insight and your candor at sharing all of your experience with us. Um, I don't have any additional questions for the panelists. Um, if you do have questions specifically, um, that you that are not answered you can go ahead and email us i put up on the screen and we'll send slides out as well um, the info at lumenlearning.com and we'll get back to you with the information that you're looking for and then i'll just turn it back to julie and see if we've got additional questions yeah i'm not seeing any other final questions coming in um, the other thing we as i said we uh, did record the webinar and so along with um, sending out a, a pdf of the slides we'll include a link to the webinar recording so if you'd like to access that later or share that with a colleague you'll be welcome to do that all right any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us at info at And thank you so much for attending this webinar, especially on a Friday morning yeah. slash afternoon. <laughs> and um, very grateful to the panelists, Dan and Peter and Matthew for, and Deborah for participating. So thanks very much.